Hi, it's Stacy at Tamarack Nature Center, part of Ramsey County Parks and Rec. Welcome back to Animal Antics. Uh, we've got some fun activities for you today to imitate some of the crazy cool animals that live here in Minnesota and in the United States. So we've got some events, some activities. You can put them together like an obstacle course if you want to, and you can use everyday items you have around your home. Um, we have some kind of special things here, but you can make it up with some really simple items. So first off, we are gonna start off with an animal long jump. It's supposed to be the uh, Olympics this year, so we're gonna try to help out with that, that void of no Olympics till next summer. So do you think that rabbits and grasshoppers are the only animals that can jump really far? No way, there are a lot of others. We have pictures of six different animals that can jump pretty far. And I'm gonna see how far I match up with. Fleas, little minuscule fleas, they can jump two feet long. Leopard frogs, three feet. Jumping mice in the woods, five feet. That's about as tall as me. Red fox, six feet. Red squirrels from branch to branch, nine feet if you can believe it. And um, mountain goats, they can go jump almost 12 feet and even on those craggy rocks. So I'm gonna try a standing long jump. You can do a standing long jump or you can do a running one. But one thing, if you want to, we'll give you the measurements for the animals. You can use a tape measure or a cloth measuring tape, or I bet you might have a ruler sitting around from, from school or from your office. You can use a piece of rope or string, mark off with tape or a knot or marker every foot until you make your own long jump measuring tape. I'm gonna start here at zero. I think I'm gonna try to channel the, the long jumping legs of the grasshopper, see how far I can get. You think I can clear the leopard frog? I hope so. So here we go, see what I've got. Woo! I'm almost a woodland jumping mouse and they're a lot smaller than I am. You can try, try that. We've got a couple other activities. We've got a high jump. So some animals like tree frogs and others need to be able to jump up high to get their food and also to escape prey, escape predators. So you can get your same measuring yarn or tape or tape measure and tape it up, hanging up in a tree, or if you're indoors, use some gentle masking tape so you don't rip off the paint um, on the wall and hang it up. I started it at two feet because I knew I could reach this high. So this is two feet, three feet, four, five, six, seven feet. Do you think I can reach up above the seven feet mark? I don't know. I'm not someone with a lot of vertical, but we'll give it a try, okay? See how, how, how high I can reach. Maybe seven and a half feet. I bet a lot of you can jump higher than me. Next up, gotta try our balance. I need to work on my ankle strength, so my balance is not my strong suit. You know who balances really well? Cats and red squirrels and other squirrels. They've got something I don't. They've got a long bushy tail. They can flip from side to side to help with their balance. So you can go to somewhere in your neighborhood or a park and you can find the curb. I'm sure you've all done this, but think like a squirrel and see if you can stay on that curb without falling off. You can try it on all fours or just on two legs. We've got another balance, balancing activity over here where we can try to go without falling off. Birds do this too. And when they lose their balance in the wind, they can use their wings whoo, or they can use their tail. So when they are on a branch, you might see them wag their tail. That's so they can communicate and not fall off. Last one, we've got the frog jump. So. Not only do frogs jump long distances, they also need to have some good agility going on. Imagine you're at a pond, maybe a fishing pond, and you see those big green lily pads that are out right now with the flowers blooming. Well, 
they will hunt for insects, hatching insects and flying insects from the top of the lily pads. So they want to take, go from one lily pad to the other without splashing in the water, cooling off and making a lot of noise. So you can use paper plates, hula hoops, uh, frisbees, lids from big ice cream buckets, set them out, pretend that they're lily pads, see if you can jump from each pretend lily pad to the other. I'm gonna start in this one, see how I do. Without getting wet, now this is my challenge one. Oh, almost. So, hope you have a little bit of fun at home and in your neighborhood making up some of animal antics and trying to imitate animals that live in and around us. Next up, Shannon's got some more ways to imitate animals and even something you can make at home to move like an animal. Hi, Shannon here. Wasn't that a ton of fun doing those fun, active animal obstacle course things with Stacy? What a great time. I have some more fun animal antics here for you to try. We are gonna start off with birds. Everybody has seen birds. They're flying around everywhere. They do, they fly in some different ways. So some birds like to soar. So show me your wings. If you're soaring, you get your wings out and you don't really flap much at all. You just kind of catch the air currents and you just sort of float. You'll see hawks and eagles doing this way up high in the air, kind of circling around. Other birds flap. Not all birds flap the same way. We are here today to see if we can flap like birds. So I have a stopwatch here. You maybe don't have an actual stopwatch, that's okay. Um, some watches, my watch has a stopwatch. Phones, a lot of phones have stopwatches. Whatever kind of timing device you wanna use is all good. I'm gonna time you for 10 seconds and we're gonna see if you can flap like a bird for 10 seconds. We're gonna start off with a crow. Everybody's seen a crow, those big black birds kind of make annoying sounds. Just like that, that's a crow. So crows will flap their wings 20 times in 10 seconds. So get your wings warmed up. I wanna see those wings. We're gonna flap, you can, you can flap this way, you can flap this way. I'm gonna time you for 10 seconds. I want you just to flap. If you're a crow, you're gonna flap 20 times in the 10 seconds, so you need to count. All right, make sure you keep track. I'm gonna tell you when to go. I'm gonna tell you when to stop. All right, on your mark, get set, go. All right, here we go. We're at two seconds. How you, are you flapping? Are you flapping good? We're at five seconds. We're halfway there. Keep flapping. Are you counting? Make sure you count. Stop. That was 10 seconds. Did you get 20 times? Probably, I bet you could have done 20. Maybe you did a little more. If you were able to flap 30 times in that 10 seconds, then you're a pigeon. If you got up to 45, you're a starling. All right, we're gonna go a little bit higher though. I'm gonna give you a really good challenge here. A chickadee. Most of us have seen chickadees. One of my favorite birds, actually. They're here all winter long and they always come to my feeder and I love listening to them and I love watching them. Chickadees can flap their wings 270 times in 10 seconds. Now, I don't know how far you got that first 10 seconds. Think about that. How much faster are you gonna have to flap to be a chickadee? All right, 270 times. Let's see how far you can get. On your mark, get set, go. All right, flap. Are you flapping fast? Gotta go fast. 270 times, we're halfway there. Keep flapping, keep it going. Oh, we're almost there, we're almost there. Stop. How far did you get? Did you get to 270? I'm guessing most of you probably didn't. 270 is a lot. It's some pretty fast flapping. Birds have special muscles and special skeletal features that help them to do that. We don't have that same kind of skeleton, so 270 is a lot. But if you were a hummingbird, guess how many times a hummingbird flaps in 10 seconds? What do you think? 500. That's crazy, 500 times. That's why you can't see hummingbirds' wings when they're flapping. If you would like to watch some birds and see how they flap and how they fly and some other fun antics that they do, you can fill a bird feeder. We have our platform feeder here. We filled it with corn and sunflower seeds. It'll attract not only birds, but it will also attract squirrels, which are super fun to watch. You don't need a platform feeder. Any feeder that you can find at the hardware store will work. 
Otherwise, you can actually make one if you just cut a milk carton in half or use an old pie tin and fill that with bird seed and set it out somewhere around your house, you will be able to watch birds. Another fun animal to watch is an otter. Otters love to slide down hills into the river and play in the water. You can make your own otter slide. Go to the hardware store, get about 15 feet of six mil millimeter plastic, some lawn staples, a pool noodle. You will need a hose or a sprinkler. You're gonna use the lawn staples to just kind of secure that piece of plastic to the ground. Use the pool noodle, kind of wrap it around the end. That's where the water's gonna kind of collect. And then turn on your hose or your sprinkler, make sure the plastic is getting really wet and just run and slide on your belly down the plastic and it's some people call them slip and slides but you can make your own and it's super fun to slide like an otter down your slip and slide another fun thing you can do is pretend to be a salamander salamanders don't do much but it is fun to watch them eat so i have here a bowl of popcorn i'm going to put some on a plate because it's really hard to eat my popcorn out of the bowl and we're going to eat like salamanders now salamanders don't use their feet or their toes to eat they don't use forks and knives they have this big sticky tongue and when lunch comes along they just sort of flip their tongue out and suck lunch back in right so no fair using your hands you can't use your hands to eat like a salamander you just need a plate and a tongue and you're just going to flip your tongue out and get some popcorn. Now, if you don't have popcorn, you can use your favorite cereal, Cheerios, Captain Crunch. You know, a lot of things will work. So here we go. We're gonna be a salamander. Get that tongue going. Mmm. -mm. And salamanders too, something you need to know. Salamanders and frogs have to blink to help them swallow. So when you're swallowing, make sure you blink. Here we go. To swallow, all right? So acting like a salamander, is a lot of fun. I gotta wash that popcorn down because I would love to teach you a salamander song. I have a song about salamanders in the forest. You need to be able to make a salamander face in order to sing the song. Now salamanders are very close to the ground. Their feet are by their heads, right? So here's your feet. But since you're a salamander, you only have four toes. You gotta get rid of your thumbs. There you go. Now they have those big bulgy eyes, make your eyes really big. You see really big eyes. And they don't have any teeth. But they always seem to kind of be smiling. So give me a toothless smile, kind of. Mm. That's your salamander face, right? When I get to the point of the song where it says, I want to see a salamander face, you need to do your salamander face. We're on the honor system here. I want to make sure you do your salamander face, all right? So here we go. Oh, the forest is a wonderful place filled with Frogs and snakes, I want to see a salamander face. Oh, the forest is a wonderful place. All right, you can sing that song over and over and over again. Practice your salamander face. If you have a spot near your house where you can find some salamanders, they love to hang out under logs. They don't actually eat popcorn. They eat crickets and worms and things that you find under logs. One last thing I would like to leave you with. A fun rainy day activity. You can make an origami frog. Here's my origami frog. Um, he actually jumps. You can make a whole herd of these guys and you can have origami frog races. So you just need a flat surface like this table here. Get your frog down there and bounce him. Whoop, I flipped him over. There's lots of ways to hop your frog. We're gonna give you a link to a website that's gonna give you instructions. All you need is a piece of square paper. I just used um, printer paper. It was a mistake that I printed and um, I just cut it into a square. So uh, you just need to cut it into an eight and a half inch square. This is about how big it will be. It's a good size frog. He jumps pretty well. And you and your friends can have frog races on your dining room table. Be so much fun. So I hope you learned some new fun things that animals do and they're super fun to watch. Go around your neighborhood, find some animals to watch and see if you can imitate some different animals than what we showed you today because imitating animals and watching animals can be so much fun. So until next time, we'll see you later.